what's the word y'all we back with some more of these reactions um we're at power forwards we've done point guard shooter guard small forward y'all have loved every single one of those we have hit uh record t on klt for q reacts as far as views go on those videos so thank you for that so now we're here power force if you don't know what this is uh go watch the other three Bleach Report is putting out their top 15 in every position based on just this season. Forget the rest of your resume. And it's from Andy Bailey and Dan Favell. Um, and I'm curious what they do about this matchup. That's why it is the cover thing. I would put, based on this season alone, Giannis 1 because he is my MVP. And Anthony Davis 2. But let's see what they do. All right. Starting off with 15 through 11. P.J. Tucker, Jaron Jackson. Wait. Why is Tucker? Hmm. Why did they do it this way? Why is Tucker's name here instead of, like, here, when in reality they got Jaron Jackson at 15? I don't know. So 15 is Jaron Jackson, 14 is John Isaac, 13 is P.J. Tucker, Aaron Gordon, and then Tobias Harris at 11. So let's talk this through. Um, yeah, it's, it's just very weird of the wording, unless they just changed it, like, the last couple of seconds ago. Um, Jaron Jackson's having a very good season, do not get me wrong. I really like Jaron Jackson's j game. I think he's he's poised to be, like... Very, very good in his career. He is the type of power forward that I would want if I was building a young team going from 2020 to 20, whatever. Defends the defends the rim uh, at a great level. Is able to stretch the floor with his ugly old jump shot, but that thing falls. That's all that really matters. And he's such a team player, it seems like. And those are the type of players. There's a reason why one of the reasons why the Memphis Grizzlies are in the bubble and have the eighth seed right now is because of Jaron and um everything he has done for the organization at 14 we have john isaac y'all know i'm a huge john isaac fan i think he has all defensive player of the year type uh type tendencies and maybe one year he will make an all defensive team and potentially win a defensive player of the year but the reason why the orlando magic are where they are is because as you can see they have two top 15 power forwards and they're trying to play them together where they're trying to have Aaron Gordon run the three or sometimes John Isaac run the three when in reality both of their games fit the four. So we just patiently waited for them to decide which one they want to keep for the future. And I would guess they're probably going to keep John Isaac. He's younger. And I think his potential might be higher. I really do think that Aaron Gordon, if he found a new situation, he could be way more impactful of a player than what he is now. And that's saying something because right now he is an impactful player. Uh, but it's just weird to have these two top 15 power forwards trying to run together when in reality it just doesn't really work like that uh, because neither of their games are catered to the small forward position luckily jonathan isaac is so good on the defensive side of the ball that he can guard other small forwards but it's offensively he is held back uh, just because he ain't got it like that future defensive player of the year candidacy is absolutely in play if not in inevitable for isaac the magic needs to be concerned about his offense which is true um again he, he struggled with injuries this season so he didn't get to play a full season and they said he won't be back for the bubble, unfortunately. But I really love John Isaac's game. Uh, P.J. Tucker. P.J. Tucker does everything you need him to do on the court. Uh, we found out that I think 99 or 100% of his points are assisted on. So he's just sitting in that corner and shooting it when he gets it. Um, imagine the 6'6 six, six guy, 6'5 six, guy, I'm sorry, running your center position at times. I love P.J. Tucker's game so much so that I have, like, P.J. Tucker merch around my house. Yeah, I know. He had, like, a... A clothing brand that like most of the proceeds are gonna go to like fighting COVID-19. I was like, I'll support the cause. I bought like three shirts, two hats. Uh, so shout out to PJ Tucker. Actually, no, it wasn't. I mean, it was technically going to the COVID-19 relief, but it was like for food banks in Houston specifically. So I mean, I was helping Houston out. Uh, next, we have Aaron Gordon. We already talked about when we were talking about Jonathan Isaac. Again, another player that is good, but you would want more from him considering the hype that he had coming out of high school. I remember that mixtape that he has. Like, yeah, that mixtape is nasty, but that's why you don't judge a player off his mixtape. And then Tobias Harris. Like, Tobias Harris is cool. He's always been cool. But you have to think about this contract, $180 million for you to be the 11th? The 11th best small four or power forward in the league? Just not cutting it. And you could probably make an argument that he's better than this number 10 candidate, and that's Paul Millsap. Either way, I mean... He's just solid, you know what I'm saying? He's underrated, overpaid, and it's possible. Chris Paul is in that in that boat, too. Underrated, overpaid. Uh, he'll never, I'm not going to say never, but he's never really in all-star conversations, even though he teeters around that. Defense is all right sometimes. Uh, okay, that's, that's uh, 15 through 11. Then we have Paul Millsap, the glue guy to the Denver Nuggets. I'm very curious what they're going to do about him, because if I'm not mistaken, he's up for a new contract this offseason. And again, like I say, he's a glue guy. He's the defense alongside Jokic, who's not a Jokic's not a bad defender by any means. Um, I think he's an underrated defender, but Paul Millsap is the guy that takes that. You know what I'm saying? 
And in some words, you may say that, hey, they should just slide Michael Porter Jr. to the four next season. But Michael Porter Jr. doesn't have that glue effect just yet. Maybe he will in his career. But Paul Millsap is always going to be a guy teetering around here because he is an impactful player. Number nine, Kevin Love. Kevin Love kind of low on this, this season. It does make sense we consider where he was like two years ago versus where he is now as far as like his supporting cast. He still put up 17 and 10 rebounds a game, three assists, which is a career high. They're letting him play make a little bit more. But you got to think about halfway through the season, he was throwing tantrums with the coaching and, and with his young players and stuff. And I don't blame him. I just wish he would have showcased it a little bit differently. You know what I'm saying? And I think he's, he said the same thing himself. But all, we all know that Kevin Love is still a very good player. And we're just waiting for the day that maybe they trade him away to a contender. We can go back and try to compete for championships. Or they just keep him on the roster for the remainder of his contract because he did sign an extension like a season or two ago. K Love at nine. At eight, John Collins. I love to see this, man. I love to see this. John Collins, at this point in his career, um, is way ahead of where a lot of people expected him to be. I mean, you saw he was drafted outside of the lottery, basically. And there was a reason for that. But he just came into his rookie season like, you know what? I'm going to show people that I was worth a lottery pick. And this season, he got even better. I love that he has the ability to roll or pop on the pick and roll with Trey Young. I keep seeing articles of people trying to break these two up, and it just doesn't make sense to me. Um, and it probably because neither of them are elite defensively and you want probably one of your top two players to be a good defender. But if you put the cast around them, I'm sure you could put together a good team if you just allow them to be themselves, man. Allow them to be themselves. So that's at number eight. Kristaps at number seven is actually surprisingly low. I would have to see who's above him. Um, from the January 31st up to the suspension, though, he was averaging 25 and 11 with three, three threes a game. That's the one. That's the Kristaps that I was expecting. Um, this entire season, but it took him a while to get there. You got to think about he was coming off like a season of missing basketball. Now he's playing with a whole new cast around him other than what he was in New York. But like, yeah, from January, bro, the man was hooping, hooping. So personally, I'd probably have him a little bit higher, a little bit higher on the list. And people were trying to talk trash about him because it was Rick Carlisle that was like, we'll never really have him post up because it's not what he's good at. Why would, just because he's tall doesn't mean we should automatically throw him in a post if that's not his game type. And people are like, what What are you saying? What are you saying? He's 7'3". He should be in a post. When in reality, bro, you play to your skill set. You play to your skill set. And Porzingis' skill set is not on the block. It's out there hitting three threes a game and, and doing stuff like that. Next is Gallinari. Shout out to Gallinari, man. I would probably put Porzingis over him, but Gallinari has this thing that as long as Gallinari can stay healthy, he's going to contribute to winning basketball. Every every time. When he played for that Denver Nuggets team, remember they won 50, 57 games, surprisingly? Gallinari was healthy that season. Then he wasn't healthy, then they weren't good. And now he has a healthy season, another healthy season under his belt, and he is contributing to winning basketball. Last season, with the Clippers, he was relatively healthy, and that team surprised the world and got to the eighth seed and took a game from the Warriors. So as long as Gallinari is healthy, he contributes to winning basketball, and that's probably why he is number six on their list. Again, I would probably have him a little bit lower than that, but I can understand the thinking because Gallinari can get you buckets all right next number five sabonis shouts to sabonis from jumping up so much um from these years um they got him at number five and he wasn't all-star this season demont sabonis first time all-star campaign has been a doozy his basic averages um might not even do justice to his productivity yes i could agree with that uh he's playing at the pace of ooh, ooh kevin love from 2013 hey eh? who finished second in plus box might uh plus Minus box, whatever. I mean, okay, there's a key difference. You're hitting threes, because, yeah, Sabonis doesn't really shoot the ball. But Sabonis is, I think, still underrated, even though he was in the all-star the season. Because, again, this stat line doesn't show the full picture of how much he impacts the game. These five assists are, are elite for the amount of time he plays and the role he plays on the team. So that's a Sabonis. Next. No. No. No, 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 not yet. Why do we have this thing of putting these dudes up? Uh, yes, he will be there eventually. What did he play, 18 games so far this year? I can't, bro. I can't. And in those 18 or so games, I don't even know. Was it even 18? I don't even know. Was it even 18? I don't even know. I may be giving him a little bit more. In those 565 minutes, yes, he looked great. But it was just 565 minutes. I'm sure there has been 565 minutes of Sabonis' season that was elite too. But it's just such a small sample size that I can't 
have him number four right now. And I love Zion. I love watching him play. I can't wait till the bubble starts, mostly because I want to see Zion hoop again. But it's too early to have him as the fourth over, over All-Star, over this guy, over this guy. Like, come on, bro. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet on Zion. And I, I do believe that he will be there. Next season, he might be here. But in 565 minutes, I can't say it. Uh, their, their net points per 100 possessions is 12.2. Better when Zion's on the floor. Uh, ranks him in, an, oh, snap, 70, mm, 97 percentile. Hold on. Maybe I need to read the article a little bit. And add an estimated 29 wins to a team expect to see over the, yeah. So I understand his impact is great. So far. You know what I'm saying? I, I just, I just would rather have the other guys that's played the entire season, the all-stars above him. But again, uh, what, what can I say? What can I say? Uh, next. Pascal. Shout out to Pascal Siakam, man. I'm so happy for the way his career has turned out. I remember three to four years ago, I was on my podcast, and we were just talking about the role players for the Raptors. And I was saying something like, I was just talking, and I was saying something like, Pascal Siakam, I wouldn't be surprised if he's traded in the next couple of days because we were around the trade deadline. And at that point, three, four years ago, Pascal Siakam hadn't really showed um, that he was going to take the jumps that he did. And then the season after that is when – he starts to play well. He starts to play better. And that's when I became a big-time fan of Pascal Siakam. So that's why I, I'm going to – I'm way smarter now than I was two or oh, three, four years ago when I was saying that stupid stuff on my podcast because anybody could take a jump. Anybody can. It just takes hard work in that offseason. Anybody could take a jump. It takes a will to take that jump, man. Um, so, yeah, it was his rookie season where he averaged 4.2, and then he got to 7.3, then 16, and then now this season, what is he averaging, 23 or something like that? Like, yeah, Pascal Siakam is great. Uh, I love watching him play, and I'm happy that he is he was able to take that next jump even after most improved player. He went from okay player to a good starter to now an all-star caliber player, and even, who knows, he may even take another step. It's still early in his career. Next at number two, Anthony Davis. Yeah, I'm right. Anthony Davis at number two, and the all-know number one is going to be Giannis. Again, Giannis is my pick for MVP and Defensive Player of the Year. I can understand if you have Anthony Davis as your Defensive Player of the Year, or even some other cats, because uh, the Defensive Player of the Year is so, so different every single year. But yeah, Anthony Davis, obviously his impact is great. You take that Lakers team and they make the playoffs last season, and there's reasons for that. LeBron's injury and the young guys, yada, yada. And now they're the one seed, and a lot of that is due to Anthony Davis. I mean, 26, 9, 3, and 2.5 and blocks and a still in the half. Beautiful numbers. And he should be in MVP conversations too. Let's be honest with each other. But I think ultimately it will go to this guy. Yeah, the Greek god. Giannis at Uh So that's it on power forwards, man. Centers should be interesting too. Because we have like, we have a lot of good centers. You know what I'm saying? We have a lot of good centers. A few great centers, but a lot of good centers. And I'm curious to how they rank them. Be sure to leave a like in the video. Let me know what you think about this. If you think Zion is where he should be, let me know why. Give me your reasoning why he is good at the fourth best based on this season, not based on potential. All right? I'm out. Peace.